repair their machines for round one of the Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship near Sacramento. Riders in the 250cc class, often referred to as the Lights class, represent the next generation of the sport. And the brutality of the 12-round outdoor series makes it the ultimate measuring stick for team managers seeking talent for their 450 class rosters. The 250 is a stepping stone. If you set any one of those guys down, so what would you be a dream? The 450s. I'm making the decision to go 450 at the end of the year because the 450 is a cream of the crop. You're racing the best of the best in the world. If you win and you win another championship in the 250, the 450 contract is going to come. I don't think it means you've made it if you sign with Pro Circuit. It means that they are giving you the opportunity to make it. Austin wants to do well. The whole family wants Austin to do well. It's the ultimate chance to prove yourself that you belong. I look like a guy that was once really good, and now I'm on a decline. You know, all these injuries. All right, Adam, you got to go. You got to do something. This year, with being fit and knowing my bike's good, there's no excuse. It's just a suffer fest. Whoever can suffer the most. No reason why I shouldn't go there winning on the podium every round. I've done everything I need to do. I've put everything I've got into this, so maybe I should retire if it doesn't work. I promise you, about Mitch, a guy who's won his whole life and then goes four years and doesn't want anything, that's got to eat him alive. I'd like to think that I'm the guy that's supposed to finally end the drought. There's only a certain amount of top factory teams. You only get a certain amount of chances. If you don't make those count, it's kind of over. When compared with some of his peers and older brother Alex, Jeremy Martin spent much of his amateur career in obscurity with results that failed to inspire interest from the top talent scouts in the sport. Yet he enters the 2016 Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship, the two-time defending champion and obvious favorite. I've never been this confident when I was growing up. I was overweight in school. I always got picked on all the time. They called me Bubba Chubbs. That's what my brother called me. Hey, Bubba Chubbs, you know? And you know, I always get the titty twisters. And I got beat up a lot. A lot of people didn't expect me to pursue the sport of motocross. I even had a school teacher, my math teacher in high school in seventh grade said to me, this motocross thing's not going to take you anywhere. And to be truthful, I didn't really care. I always felt like when I rode the dirt bike, that that was my freedom. And the better I got, the better I felt about myself. With getting results and being able to deal with these multi-million dollar companies and representing them, I've been able to mature as a person and realize even though I may have had those struggles and a lot of people picked on me, it really set me up and I've been really motivated ever since then. Because at the end of the day, I'm doing what makes me happy. I mean, how many people really get to do what they love in life and go travel the world? I get paid to be in shape and I get to ride a dirt bike. I mean, that's pretty badass. That looked phenomenal. It was good. Great ride, dude. Really moderate. Perhaps the most telling sign of Jeremy's ongoing commitment to excellence was the decision to hire Johnny O'Mara as his trainer, shortly after winning his first outdoor title in 2014. On a dirt bike, O'Mara was a multi-time motocross and supercross champion, and on a mountain bike, he has been winning cross-country national championships up until the present time. I went with Johnny O'Mara because when you think about Johnny O'Mara, you think about just a gnarly dude that worked his ass off. Johnny holds me accountable. Come on, man, I know that you can be there. But Jeremy, in the last year, I've learned so much about him. You know, how far can I push this kid? He had like a four-week boot camp when I came on board. And I was just like, oh my God, this guy, you can't break him. And I had him tested his VO2 max, his power to weight ratio. He has a body that can do the Tour de France. That's the numbers he has. We call him mutant. He probably didn't tell you that. He has mutant-type numbers. I had never seen that. I'm okay with sacrifice in the next 10 years of my life. I want to be able to walk away from my career and when I look back, know that I did everything I could possibly do to win championships and to dominate, so I have no regrets. Painful. I don't enjoy those. At that point in time when I'm suffering, I just want to look over at Johnny and just give him the bird. That's you, Johnny. In the past 42 years, far less than half of the riders who have won a lights class championship have gone on to win a premier class championship in the outdoors. 
But if Jeremy Martin could win a third Lights Class title in 2016, it would place him in a category with two of the sport's all-time greats, Ricky Carmichael and Ryan Villapoto. History would say that Martin's main competition will come from Pro Circuit. Led by owner and founder Mitch Payton, the Monster Energy and Kawasaki-backed team is the most successful in the history of the 250cc, or Lights Class. Adding to Mitch's motivation is the fact that in the past four years, the team has not won a title in the outdoors. The longest championship void they have ever experienced. I don't know why he hasn't won. Do I think Oscar going to bring the championship? Yes, I think he can. Will it be this year? Will it be two years down the road? I don't know. Sooner the better as far as I'm concerned. Much of Mitch's hopes for a title in 2016 fall on the motivated veteran Joey Savacci, the often injured but blazing fast Adam Cien Cirillo and the hyped incoming rookie, Austin Forkner. There's always going to be people talking on social media, how am I going to do, how's it going to go, and I feel like if I do good, there's going to be less people talking crap than if I don't, so yeah, I won't win. I'm going to be bummed if I don't win. Being brought under Mitch Payton's wing has brought a lot of confidence. This is all I've wanted my whole life. This guy believes in me. I must be doing something right. Joey, he came to us and had never been on the podium. He finally got podiums, and he won a national. He's very driven hard worker, and I think you're going to see good things from him. Growing up, I won a lot. I was never the underdog. When I was going to the race, I'd roll up to the starting line, everybody's looking at me. Now, because I've had a couple injuries, a couple weeks, I'm going to roll up to Hangtown, there's not one person going to be looking at me. I welcome the challenge. It's just something new for me to conquer. If you look at where he stepped into the sport, he won his very first Supercross. Like, how would you not want to keep that kid? Now there's doubters, and they're like, oh, he's never going to be able to do it. But I've already seen him do it. I just gotta get him to do it again. In the days leading up to round one at Hangtown, some are feeling the confidence only supplied by focused, structured training, and others the hollowness of regretful preparation. As it will soon be clear,